assembly of Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Please join me in singing our processional hymn, The King of Love, My Shepherd is.
voice, we may know him who calls us each by name, and follows where he leads, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the last Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The rulers, elders, and scribes assembled in Jerusalem with Annas, the high priest, Caiaphas, John, and Alexander, and all who were of the high priestly family. When they had made the prisoners stand in their midst, they inquired, By what power or by what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders, if we are questioned today because of a good deed done to someone who is sick and are asked how this man has been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that this man is standing before you in good health by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified and whom God raised from the dead. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders. It has become the chief cornerstone. There is salvation in no one else, but there is no one. Uh, there is no other name under heaven given among mortals by which we must be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And we will read together Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd; I shall not be in the flock. He makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. He revives my soul, and guides me along right pathways for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff they comfort me. You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil, and now my cup is running over. Surely your goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. A reading from the first letter of John. We know love by this, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need? and yet refuses help. Little children, let us love, not in word or speech, but in truth and action. And by this we will know that we are from the truth, and will reassure our hearts before him. Whenever our hearts condemn us, for God is greater than our hearts, and he knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before God, and we receive from him whatever we ask, because we obey his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is that, and that is his commandment, that we should believe in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, just as he had commanded us. All who obey his commandments abide, abide in him, and he abides in them. And by this we know that he abides in us, by the spirit that he has given us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for our sequence hymn and the proclamation of the gospel. <clears throat>
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. John. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, I am the Good Shepherd. The Good Shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired man, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down with my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. The Gospel of the Lord. And praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to give you a little look behind the curtain here uh, regarding the ordination process in the Episcopal Church. Um, in order to become a member of the clergy, you have to spend several hundred hours being a hospital chaplain, or at least a sort of trainee hospital chaplain because you know you're doing this internship while you're still at school you're not you're not fully baked yet and it's it's sort of like shock therapy really um they make you walk into these rooms like make cold, cold calls you, you walk into these rooms of, of people who at best do not really want to see you and who at worst uh, see you coming and immediately think that they're going to die um, and then into this situation, you're supposed to speak to them in some meaningful way. And then you go back to this other group of trainees and supervisors who are uh, evaluating you on how you did. Um, and sometimes they're role playing. It is, it is not as bad as it sounds. It's, it's, it's much, much worse. Um, and so one day, I remember walking into a hospital room at St. Mark's Hospital in Salt Lake City, Utah, and I found a man who was sitting up in his bed. And like an adult, I said the one thing that you probably should never say to somebody who's in a hospital, which is a bright smiling, how are you today? <laughs> well, son, the, the, came the grim reply, I'm dying. What do you have to say about that? And after what felt like a few minutes of not being able to say anything at all, I was able to choke out something genius like, well, uh, what do you have to say about that? <laughs> and, and the man's response to that has stuck with me. He said, well, I think I've had a pretty good life. I'm just not sure it was good enough. And later, when I made my presentation to the, the group of other trainees and our supervisor, I was, I was told that I, I should have assured this man that his worries were unfair. If I was truly doing my job, I should have assured him that his life had been good enough. That's what everybody assumed that he wanted to hear. And that was my role as, as his terrified pastor, uh, apparently, was to tell him what he wanted to hear. Don't worry, sir, I'm sure that your life has been just fine. But I couldn't tell him that. I, I did not feel like his shepherd. I felt like a hired king. In Jesus' story that we read this morning, he says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me, just as the Father knows me and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. In our real and everyday lives, we, we spend a lot of time looking for hired hands. We look for people that will essentially tell us what we want to hear. 
we hire them to tell us that everything's going to be okay and that we don't have any real problems. Don't worry, sir, I'm sure your life has been just fine. I promise you're a good mother. I don't care what anybody says. You're a good father, a good son, a good lover. You're a good person. And the problem is that these assurances do not often stick. We need to keep hearing them again and again, every day, every hour, every minute, all the time. Because all the while, we hear these things, and we suspect that you know, these assurances are deep down not true. We think that if we get enough people to tell us that we're great, everything will be okay, and that we might just finally be able to believe it. But, but we never do. And even on our deathbeds, we lie and say, I think I've lived a pretty good life. I'm just not sure it was good enough. And that's the problem with hired hands. Uh, that's, that's the problem with yes men, with, with people who tell us what we want to hear. Because when things get really, really bad, they have nothing else to say to you. When the wolves of life really come, when your suspicions that you're not a good person turn out to be very well founded, but when it looks like the end is near, your hired hands run away, and they leave you all alone. So, so what do we say? What, what, what word do we have for, for that guy in the hospital bed? Is there good news for those of us who spend most of our time hoping that no one will ever get a peek on what's really going on on the inside? And I can't help but think about one of my favorite hymns, which is Martin Luther's A Mighty Fortress is Our God. Uh, number 687 for you diehards. Um, you know, I make us sing it about once a quarter. Um, and I love it because that third verse is so good. And though this world with devils filled yeah. should threaten to undo us, we will not fear for God hath willed is true to triumph us. The prince of darkness grim, we tremble not for him. His rage we can endure, for lo, his doom is sure. One little word shall fail. And that one little word is Jesus, the Good Shepherd. The Good Shepherd is not like the hired hands that you employ when you have no other option. The, the hired hands that, that demand money up front and, and have no stake in the sheep. That, that leave the flock to become somebody's lunch at the first sign of trouble. When the wolves start to come, when your life really starts to fall apart, the, the I'm okay, you're okay charades really start to break down. And when Jesus comes, you know, what does he say? What is that word that fells them? He doesn't say, um, I'm the good shepherd, and I just know what my sheep really need to hear. He doesn't say, I'm the good shepherd, and I know how to get my sheep to chill out. He doesn't say, I know how to keep my sheep in line. He doesn't say, I promise that those wolves are not so bad. No. He says, I am the good shepherd. I lay down my life for the sheep. The wolves are real. We know this. We are beset on all sides by, by things that we have messed up and broken down, despite our best attempts to be good. We have things that are done and things left undone. And, and these are the wolves that are coming for us. And we run around like crazy looking for hired hands to reassure us that these wolves are, are not huffing and puffing and blowing the doors of our straw houses. Oh, you're not a bad person, they'll say. Or, you know, you're, you're better than so-and-so. And that'll make us feel better for a minute. Until we look over our shoulder and do something else, or feel another feeling, or think another thought, and see that, that that pack of wolves just getting a little bit closer. So we go through our sequence of hired hands. Another one, another one, another one. But then, as things keep getting worse and worse, they quit. And when we do something that makes it impossible for somebody to say, you're not a bad person, we find that there's no other way around. When we've ruined a relationship completely, when, when our self-centeredness has, has turned a marriage into a disaster, or, or our anger causes somebody real physical pain, 
These are times where we desperately look for somebody to tell us that, that no, you're not a bad person. But there's no one there but wolves. But for us, the price of darkness grim, we tremble not for him. One little word shall fell him. The bad news is bad in that hospital. And I couldn't tell that man had been I couldn't tell that man that his life had been good enough. Because I didn't know him, and it would have been a lie, and he wouldn't have believed me anyway. The only thing that he actually would have believed was the thing that he knew to be true. You know, the, the bad news. The, the, you know, no, sir, your life hasn't been good enough. But when we are deserted by our hired hands and our yes men, Jesus is the one who remains. He is the one who sets us beside still waters and sets a table before us. And this is the gospel. It's, it's like I said last week. This is the difference between Jesus and, and any other philosopher or, mor philosopher or moral teacher. Jesus comes and stays with us in our wrongdoing, and he actually handles our sin. That's, that's what the cross is about. And not only does Jesus identify himself as the good shepherd who sacrifices himself for the sheep, Jesus places himself in the role of the sacrificial lamb. In John 10 today, you know, he's calling himself the good shepherd, but in John chapter 1, John the Baptist calls him the lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. He is both the shepherd and the sheep. And that's how far Jesus was willing to go to save us. That's how far he's willing to go to be with us. Our lives haven't been good enough to keep those wolves at bay. But the good shepherd lays his life down for the sheep. We look in the things uh, that are done and the things that are left undone. But praise God that we have a good shepherd and that he has laid his life down for us. Amen. Christians, please stand and confess your faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of the heaven and earth. Of all that is seen and unseen, we believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, the one being of the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate.
Guy, Pat, Rachel, Debbie, Mary, Elsa, Becky, James, Mike, and Patricia. We also pray for the health and well-being of all essential workers, medical personnel, and physicians. And any petitions you'd like to add as well. We pray for Pastor Marty, for Peggy, for Sandy and Jerry. Sam, as he prepares to move to Europe. Hear us, Lord. For your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We give thanks for the gift of rain in the new season. For the gift of children. We will exalt you, O God, our King. And pray his name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Pray for Ken, for Kay, B, for Mary Lou, for Wendy, for Ethan and Brooke, and Steve, for Lord. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. Who put their trust in you? Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church, and give us the peace and unity of that heavenly city, where the Father and the Holy Spirit, you live and reign, now and forever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Share with one another a sign of God. So just a couple of announcements. Um, first of all, good morning. Uh, welcome, welcome to All Saints. Um, welcome if you are at home. I keep getting reminded that there are honest-to-God parishioners on the other end of that little blinky camera, um, and I met one of them for the first time this morning, so uh, so happy Easter to y'all. Um, if you are indeed tuning in for the first time, um, please uh, you know, uh, feel free to look on our bulletin for my contact information. We'd love to know how to serve you uh, better here at All Saints. Um, we are returning to the land of the living. We're getting vaccinated. We're finished. We, we, we finished the building. I'm uh, getting uh, baptisms, marriages, funerals on the books. Um, so if any of you have um, had to delay these things for the pandemic or have had a friend who's had to delay these things for the pandemic, please get me a call. Please give me a call. We can set some dates for you. Um, and also, uh, in addition to any of those events, if you have a, a grad in your life or somebody who is uh, um, accomplishing something big uh, this season, let me know. We'd like to commemorate them uh, at the 11 a.m. service on May 16th and sort of pray with them and give them a little gift to commemorate that hard work. So uh, let me know what's going on in your lives, basically. Um, after a brief hiatus, we've got uh, Wednesday morning Bible study at 10.30 and uh, our 6 p.m. Thursday book group um, at 6 p.m. Um, we're doing it hybrid style now, so you can tune in uh, uh, live via the Zoom links that are in the newsletter, or you can simply join us at those times over in the parish hall. Um, I will say uh, it was really awesome to meet some of my clergy uh, colleagues for the first time uh, this weekend at a conference. I've only seen them on the Zoom things. We've only um, conducted business together on Zoom, and it is a very tedious platform. And I had made the assumption that they're tedious people, but they're not. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm looking forward to more of this, like, meeting in person, private stuff. Let's, let's do more of it. Um, this year, uh, finally, uh, for Mother's Day, we hope to celebrate all of those caregivers in our lives uh, by, by collecting donations of diapers and, uh, and feminine uh, hygiene products um, up here on the altar. Um, these products are necessary, and they are expensive, and our local food banks in Whitefish and Columbia Falls never have enough of these things. So. Um, they rarely have anything to give away. So um, if you're making a Costco run in the next couple weeks, um, 
please consider picking up some of those items and just bring them to church on uh, on the 16th or on the um, but on the Mother's Day the ninth, right? No. Ninth on the ninth, um, and um, and we can also do the shopping for you. So um, if you place a check in the plate with, with Mother in the memo line, we will we will add to the stack and hopefully um, occlude everything else up here with uh, generosity. Um, That's it. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, for your sake became poor, so that by his poverty you might become rich.
but chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true paschal lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sins of the world. By his death, he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, as we who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. And we celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit, to be for your people the body and blood of your Son the holy food and drink of new and unending life from him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with the Blessed Virgin Mary and all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever.
Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord, to him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. And may you live beyond shame and live beyond fear, for your Creator has made you holy, has always protected you, and loves you as a mother. Fight with the fight of faith. And may the blessing of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Our closing commitment is Savior, like Shepherd, be.